One company dares to dream bigger and do the impossible. One company pushes the limits of the status quo. One company stands above the rest and redefining an entire industry. We are PHP Agency. What's up, guys? So funny story. I was doing some research on the multi-level marketing industry when I came across a company called PHP Agency. It's ran by a pretty popular YouTuber named Patrick Bet David. Now on this channel, we cover the full picture of investing in entrepreneurship, not just the nice stuff, not the glamour stuff, you know, how to get rich, how to increase your wealth and you know, or protect your wealth, but the whole picture, including the ugly, you know, what to watch out for, what the risks are, how people use business as a way to take advantage of the vulnerable and desperate, which I've covered pretty extensively with the whole fake guru series. But that's only telling part of the story. When it comes to predatory practices and businesses, there's really two categories that either, you know, unethical entrepreneurs or unethical business models fall under. The first is the outright fraud and scam. This is pretty straightforward. It's 100% predatory. It's meant to just part you with your money, trick you, get your money and run. And the fake entrepreneurs that run this, you know, it's the same thing every time. Fake lifestyle, fake story. <laughs> you know, they're, they're just there to take advantage of the dumb, desperate and greedy. Now, the second type of sketchy uh, entrepreneur and business model isn't necessarily a fraud. I like to call these the gray zone businesses and entrepreneurs. These are typically legal, but tend to be unethical where they're not really creating value in the world. And most of the people involved wind up leaving <laughs> with their time and money wasted. So for the first part, the, the clear scams and frauds, I, I covered that ad nauseum, no need to beat a dead horse, but I haven't really gone over the kind of gray zone business models and entrepreneurs, which, you know, having done my research recently is the rabbit hole goes really deep and it goes to the highest levels. But to our original topic of PHP agency and its CEO, Patrick Bet David, he runs a pretty popular YouTube channel, which discusses business and investing topics, which I obviously can appreciate. And I have no problem with that channel per se. It's quite entertaining and got nothing against it. But his real claim to fame, or at least claim for credibility as a, as a business expert, is that he founded and grew a, a successful company called PHB Agency, which runs a multi-level marketing business model. Now, for those of you who don't know, multi-level marketing is a very controversial business structure because a lot of people accuse it of really typically being a thinly veiled pyramid scheme. So in this video, we're going to take a closer look at PHP Agency and see if Patrick Bet David is running a legitimate value creating business that provides value to its customers and its employees or potentially is an illegal pyramid scheme. We're going to look at that business and determine it in this video today. The FTC filed a complaint against Amway alleging five counts of violating Section 5 of the Federal Trade Commission Act. This included resale price maintenance and misleading earnings claims. What the FTC did not include in the allegations were claims that Amway was a pyramid scheme stating that Amway is not in business to sell distributorships and is thus not a pyramid distribution scheme. Amway specifically avoided the pyramid scheme label because they 1. do not require an entry fee two, make product sales a precondition to receiving a performance bonus, and three, require that products be sold to retail customers. In the final judgment, Amway and its representatives were ordered to cease allocating customers among their distributors, cease retail price fixing, and cease misrepresenting profits, earnings, or sales to its recruits. This ruling by the FTC concerning the business practices of Amway, although never codified into law, became known as the Amway Rules, 
and have since been used as precedent by other multi-level marketing companies to avoid facing charges of being a pyramid scheme. With the world of Multi-level marketing is a marketing and compensation structure used by businesses to sell their products through salespeople, usually referred to as distributors. These distributors make money in two ways, through commissions on their sales, as well as recruiting new distributors and getting a cut of their commissions. The distributors they recruit are referred to as a downline, with the potential to earn a massive amount of income if they can build out a large enough downline. When done correctly, their sales network should resemble a pyramid with them at the top and several levels of the recruits below, with the cut of all their commissions flowing through the upline. Although MLMs have been around for decades, due to their regulatory ambiguity, many are still shrouded in controversy. A study analyzing 167 MLM income disclosures showed that over 90% of those involved lost money, with only the few at the top of the network making profits. Due to their poor track record, Many MLMs put on a flashy presentation to sell their recruits on the potential to make a lot of money, and some even get into legal trouble by making misleading income claims. Because commissions need to be paid to distributors several levels up, the underlying products sold tend to be grossly overpriced and uncompetitive. In order to allow for a profit margin, as well as several levels of commissions, the markup on MLM products need to be extremely high. For example, this protein powder sold by the MLM supplement company Herbalife costs $2.35 an ounce, whereas the competing product sells for less than one third that price. Because of this, companies like Herbalife have been accused in actuality of running a thinly veiled pyramid scheme. In 2014, the FTC opened up an investigation into Herbalife's business practices, and after two years, they reached a settlement agreeing to pay $200 million to compensate those they deceived with inaccurate earnings claims, as well as restructure their business operations to reward distributors for what they sell and not how many people they recruit. That said, the FTC did not accuse Herbalife of operating a pyramid scheme. Hi, good morning. So uh, Herbalife in their press release had said that the FTC had found that um, the company was not an illegal pyramid scheme. In my quick read to the complaint, I actually don't see the words pyramid scheme appear anywhere, but maybe I missed it. So can you comment a bit on that? Sure. We didn't allege a pyramid deception count, but what we did allege was an unfairness count. We are charging that Herbalife's compensation structure unfairly rewards recruiting that is ultimately unrelated to retail demand. So I'm not really, we focus less on the label than on making sure that the facts in the complaint um, alleged what we consider to be the core problem with Herbalife's business practices. And our focus also was in obtaining timely structural relief for consumers going forward and also for um, achieving meaningful relief for consumers who lost money as a re result of Herbalife's practices. According to the FTC, the difference between a legal MLM and an illegal pyramid scheme is that if the MLM is not a pyramid scheme, it will pay you based on your sales to retail customers without having to recruit any new distributors. Whereas in pyramid schemes, your income is based mostly on how many people you recruit and not on how much product you sell. Oftentimes, you'll be encouraged or even required to buy a certain amount of product at regular intervals, even if you already have more inventory than you can use or sell. I can make endless amount of content discussing how sketchy the whole MLM business model is, but in this video, we just need to know the basics of what an MLM business structure looks like and what separates a legal MLM business from an illegal pyramid scheme, and then see how PHP agency stacks up. Founded in 2009, People Helping People, PHP for short, 
was formed with the vision to bring life insurance to multicultural middle-class Americans while providing entrepreneurial opportunity to people in these communities. To do this, PHP partners with top life insurance carriers and recruits agents to sell these policies using a multi-level marketing structure. Like many MLMs, PHP claims to offer its agents a lucrative business opportunity, but in actuality, their life insurance agents operate as independent contractors with commission-based pay. If we look at PHP's compensation and promotional guidelines, we see a very complex, multi-level commission structure where agents can move up the income hierarchy based on their license status, number of recruits, and number of sales. In this system, PHP pays agents up to 11 levels of commissions ranging from making 30% of sales up to 120% of sales. Because of this bloated multi-level payout structure, the underlying products sold are usually too expensive and cannot compete with their non-MLM counterparts, making them too difficult to sell. This sometimes causes MLM distributors to only sell to their downline recruits and then tell those recruits to do the same to their downline, causing a legal MLM to devolve into an illegal pyramid scheme. And what's disturbing about PHP's promotion guidelines is that they encourage this behavior by making the number of recruits identical to the number of sales required to get promoted, effectively telling their agents that recruiting people and then selling those recruits an insurance policy is the best way to get promoted. And then last but not least is the obvious one. If you just make money from recruiting, that's the pyramid scheme. But for the sake of this argument, let's just assume PHP is doing everything right and most sales are being done outside of their network. Is the average PHP sales agent actually making any money? If we look at PHP's 2019 income disclosure statement, we can see a breakdown of what the sales agents actually got paid that year. To best illustrate this, we're going to compare the income of the average PHP agent to that of the average California minimum wage worker. As of now, the California minimum wage is $14 an hour, and if we assume full-time employment, the average minimum wage worker earns just under $30,000 a year. If you look at what PHP agents earn, less than 5% make more than $25,000 a year. Therefore, more than 95% of their recruits would be better off flipping burgers at McDonald's. Between the deceptive marketing practices, convoluted compensation structure, and the fact that 95% of their agents make less than minimum wage, things aren't looking too good for the PHP business model. But the question still stands. Is PHP an illegal pyramid scheme? Okay, so let's cut straight to the chase. Is PHP an illegal pyramid scheme? Well, according to the FTC definition, it's pretty straightforward. If they get a majority of their revenue by charging fees and selling products to their recruits, then boom, that's a pyramid scheme. But if a majority of the company's revenue comes from outside of the system by selling product, in this case, a insurance, financial products, to people outside of PHP, regardless of their compensation structure, that is technically a legal multi-level marketing company. I don't know why Patrick, but David tends to misstate the difference between a pyramid scheme and an MLM, but you know, it's not that complicated. Now, PHP is a privately held company, so I can't just go online and look up their, you know, quarterly earnings report or their uh, balance sheet and see where that revenue is coming from. But if we go to their 2019 income disclosures, we could do something I like to call mathematics and then afterwards apply something I like to call basic logic and draw actually quite a few conclusions from it. Okay, so if we look at PHP's total annual payout in 2019, we can do some simple math by multiplying the percentage of paid agents by the 11,000 active agents to get to the total number of agents per level. Then we multiply the average annual income at that level by the number of agents it was paid to, which gives us a total payout for that level. Then we add up all the levels to get to the total amount of almost $68 million in commissions paid out that year. Now that we know what the commissions were, we could look at what PHP charges agents and see if it's more or less what they paid them. 
Agents just joining the company must complete the new associates agreement and pay an enrollment fee of $199. Then there's an annual fee of $99, a $15 monthly fee to use the company's app. And if we assume that 100% of the agents are sold a life insurance policy, although I have no hard numbers to pin this to, $50 a month in revenue generated per policy is a very conservative assumption we could use. So now we just need to multiply all of these annual and monthly fees by 11,000 agents to get to a conservative estimate of just under $12 million in yearly sales generated from charging fees and selling policies internally. So in summary, PHP paid its agents about $68 million, which is almost six times more than what they potentially charged them in 2019. So based on the amount of compensation their agents receive, versus what PHP charges them, it's safe to say that a majority of the revenue coming into PHP is from outside of the system. It's from an end customer, okay? So it's safe to say that the FTC probably isn't gonna be shutting them down anytime soon because they do not qualify as an illegal pyramid scheme. But what's legal and what's ethical are not necessarily the same thing. Uh, you know, looking at their 2019 income disclosures, we can actually draw two more conclusions, which is one, if we, let's say we decide to define being a financially successful agent, insurance agent working for PHP as earning a hundred thousand or more. So if we do that, then we could determine by the math that there is a 1% success rate and a 99% failure rate among their insurance agents. Out of 11,000 of them in 2019, currently I think they said they have 14,000, 1% of them are making 100K and above as working for PHP. So if you think a business model like that is ethical, you know, that's your call. But it doesn't surprise me that they tend to target these underserved communities that tend to be less educated, less sophisticated, and will likely do, if, if you appeal to their, hey, you could be your own boss, you could make all this money, you could you know, live the dream life, they're less likely to do a fraction of the research I just did, because if they did, they would realize, hey, <laughs> there's a 99% chance that I'm not gonna be making good money from this. I'm better off going to play the lottery. At least then I won't have to work for weeks and months, maybe even years before I realize I ain't making anything. Now that brings us to the second conclusion we can draw by looking at their disclosures, that if you look at their compensation plan, you need to build a robust downline, uh, a pyramid of recruits, if you will, below you if you want to start making this this money this top one percent money you won't be making a lot of money in this mlm structure by just making sales you'd have to make an ungodly amount of sales it's mostly based off of recruiting that's how you get that compensation to flow up to you which brings me to what i believe uh, in terms of is php because we determine it's legal but is it ethical and if you ask me, I don't think it is, because if you look at how things are done, the people at the bottom of this, uh, you know, <laughs> it's not a pyramid scheme, but this pyramid of recruits, the people at the bottom, the onus is on them to make sales, and then a huge chunk of their commission winds up being taken from them and flowing to the top. And they're told, hey, if you want your income to go up, you're gonna have to get your own little, let's call it a pyramid of recruits below you to make sales and then their commission can flow up to you. So this kind of taking the risk from the people at the top and putting it to the people at the bottom, that I don't view that as an ethical business model, okay? What should happen is the management on top, the executives, the people making the decisions should create a business where the salespeople with a reasonable amount of effort and difficulty sell their product or service and make a decent living from it. Not where 99% of them don't succeed and don't make a decent living. That is an ethical in my book. As far as I'm concerned, that's why management gets paid a lot 
So they create a business with competitive products and services that can be sold and everyone wins. It's a win-win situation for everyone. The customers win, the salespeople make money, the, the, the office staff, everyone's making money, the customer's happy, they're getting value. That is the kind of business model I'm interested in. And that's why these kind of gray zone business models and gray zone business gurus, I have no interest in because I wanna do business what I consider the correct way, the ethical way. And there's, there's a ton of opportunity to do it that way. You don't have to do this sketchy stuff to, to succeed as an entrepreneur or as an investor. But anyway, that's my opinion. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and this was informative. There's going to be plenty more to come on this kind of subject, this, this whole MLM industry. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace. Like ocean, she brownies, like potion. Girl, ask me the motion, yo, try to hold it.